Greetings fellow mathematicians and welcome back to the art of integration. We're going to take a look at an integral that I call the super Gaussian integral. Now you'll want to be familiar with two results. The first is the regular Gaussian integral. That's the case here where n equals 1 and you want to be familiar with the gamma function. If you're not familiar with either of those, check out the videos that I have linked down below in the description where we go through each of those in detail. If you are familiar with them, let's get to evaluating the super Gaussian integral. First thing we're going to notice is since n is a positive integer, this is an even function and we're integrating it over a symmetric interval. So we can rewrite this as twice the integral from zero to infinity. All right, at this point, the integral that we're left with, we seem kind of stuck. There's not much that we can do with it, but we might be tempted to try a substitution in the form t equals that power of x. So let's try a substitution in the form t equals x raised to the 2n power. All right, we're going to calculate the differential. So just apply the power rule. And since we're implementing a substitution with a definite integral, let's go ahead and change or convert our x limits to new t limits using our substitution. All right, notice in your substitution, when x is zero, t is zero, and as x approaches infinity, t also approaches infinity. So our limits stay the same here. The real work is in converting that power of x, which is missing in the integral here. Now the easiest way to do this is to first solve your substitution for x. And you can rewrite that as t raised to the 1 over 2n power, that'll equal x. And if you take that power of x, divide it to the other side, and then convert x's to t's, you can get your differential as the following. We're going to divide the n to the other side to get 1 over n. And again, if you go through some basic algebra, using your substitution solved for x, and being careful with the exponents, you get this as 1 over n times t to the 1 divided by 2n minus 1 dt equals 2 dx. And we're going to keep that factor of 2 on the dx side. All right, now with all that, we can convert our integral from x to t. First thing, I'm going to take that factor of 2, bring it inside the integral there, that way I can convert 2 dx to this expression. Our integral still goes now from 0 to infinity. And we're going to convert term by term. We have our exponential term. We can just rewrite that with our substitution as e to the negative t. And we're converting 2 dx to this, 1 over n times t raised to the 1 over 2n minus 1 power times dt. All right, we're going to notice that we're integrating with respect to t, which means I can take this factor of 1 over n out front. So we'll write this as 1 over n times our integral from 0 to infinity. And I'm going to rearrange some of the factors here. I'm going to take the power of t and write that first. And that's now multiplying the exponential e to the negative t. And what we're going to notice here is that this integral 
is exactly the definition for the gamma function where z equals 1 divided by 2n. And that allows us to write, again, this whole integral in terms of the gamma function. We have a factor of 1 over n, and that whole integral comes out to the gamma function of 1 divided by 2n. And that is most of the work here. Now, we can actually go a little bit further and get a slightly nicer looking result by recognizing that this looks pretty close to this iterative property of the gamma function. The only thing that's missing, our input is 1 over 2n. We're missing a factor of 2 in that denominator. So let's multiply by 1, 2 divided by 2. And at this point, we can now implement that iterative property of the gamma function. And again, we're going to use z as 1 divided by 2n. So this whole term, that just comes out to equal the gamma function of 1 divided by 2n plus 1. And that's it. We have our factor of 2. And that's now multiplying the gamma function of 1 divided by 2n plus 1. And that is it. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to come out to be a nice exact value, but the gamma function is well known, and there's a lot of nice values for it with very accurate decimal values. So here, the super Gaussian integral, we can rewrite it in terms of the gamma function. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed this problem in our series, The Art of Integration, where we're all about creative problem solving methods for integrals. If you enjoyed the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.